So we're here in a little bit of a different location than usual. I'm out in the garage, which as you can see is definitely something of a minor disaster because, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I really need to deal with. This stuff is all trash. I need to just send it off to like the electronics or something. Well, the monitor and the keyboards and that's fine. All the rest of this is junk. But um, anyway, some people have written in and been a little concerned about the lack of videos lately. And it's explained by the fact that I really haven't been in the best place mentally over the last little while. I've really been kind of lacking in self-confidence and confidence in my ability to make videos and really the ability to do much of anything. It's, it's really just got to do with me. Um, all of it's got to do with me. There's a lot of stuff that's going on, and I'm sure that all of it has something to do with me too, but whatever. Anyway, you know, there's there's lots of stuff sitting around. That was a PowerBook 170. I'm still pissed off about this because this thing was mint before the shipping company got their way with it because there was no packaging material. And of course, now it's certainly not, as you can clearly see. Fortunately, I found another 170, so I've been picking parts off of that to get the other one going. This actually is from the other 170. I don't know if I made a video of it or not, but uh, I know I mentioned it. Look at this mess. This was all about because of a NICAD system battery that blew up. So this is ruined. It'll be ruined anyway because it's got all these busted standoffs, which I'm sure you can see. If you focus on them, there we go. Just using the cell phone to record this, I really didn't feel like going to go get an actual camera. I know the people who keep bitching about 1080p 60fps footage will like it, so whatever. Uh, this is the uh, power control board out of the other 170. 140 or 170 could be used for either motherboard. And the problem with this one is right there. If it'll actually focus on that. It seems more keen to focus on all the other junk, but yeah, right, right about there. Come on, focus on the motherboard, you piece of junk. There we go. D16 is uh, rather toasty, so we have a no power situation with that. I think that's pretty well explained by uh, the fact that that's burned up. But anyway, uh, there's the rest of the board. There's a 520C with a busted right hinge. I gotta get rid of that too. There's a lot of things in here that need to be listed for sale and just pitched. But the point of the video actually is this. As you can see, it looks quite a bit different from that 170, but it's still a Macintosh PowerBook. It is a PowerBook 165C. And as you can see, it's actually in really good condition. Or so it would seem at first. Anyway. I mean, there's a little bit of... I think the hinge over here is a little broken, but... Other than that, it looks okay. Now, this being a 165C... The display is a little bit bigger than the 180C, but it's also passive matrix. So that's when you got the two controls there. I think the 180C just had a brightness control. I know the 170 over there with an active matrix display only had a brightness control. All right, so we will take a look at the system here just briefly. You can see it's floppy. It is one of the rubber feet. Uh, port for power. Kensington lock. If this thing had a modem, it would be there. This thing is not focusing. There we go. HDI 30 SCSI, ADB for keyboard and mouse, and probably other things as well, like keypads and whatever. Monitor. It's a microphone and a headphone. Two Apple serial ports. Looks like one would be technically intended to be used with a printer, the other with a modem. External modem programmer, reset, power switch. There's the other foot. This one looks like it's kind of busted. Of course, that's all right, because I, can, I have that other parts machine. I can just take the foot off of that. And uh, take a foot off of that and use it. And uh, look at this. Hmm, somebody has seen the need to drill a bunch of holes there. Not sure why one would do that, but okay. And uh, what the hell is this? Looks like we got a lot more holes. We got a 
thing there. It looks like an alligator clip, and oh, good grief, what is going on here? What the? All right, you got me. This thing has been modded, and I don't really know how I feel about this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not under the weather, I promise. <laughs> but this, this fan is just... Really, the way they did it was kind of ingenious on one hand, because they actually had it hooked up to the battery compartment, so it would run off the charging circuit, which is really quite a, quite a clever bit of engineering, but why would you put a fan in one of these machines? I don't get it. So, I mean, there's one thing. You could, maybe it was in, like, a hot rack or something. Um, it also had a switch. Where's the switch? It's on the floor somewhere. There it is. Had the switch in there. Of course, this is... You know, the wire leads had come undone and all that other stuff, so that's junk. Um, and the one dumb thing that they really, actually, the really dumb thing that they did is the way that they've put this in place is with absolutely no regard. I mean, you can see it, it doesn't really turn because the way that they've done this, and because I, I took this, this base off, but the way they did it is they stuck this thing, I guess they put it all together. Drilled out this stupid hole, stuck this fan in here, but because half of it is on the battery, the battery compartment. If we go ahead and have a look at this lower pan, which I think is pretty much exactly the same across all of these machines, you can see that the uh, the battery compartment sticks out quite a bit. So that was kind of stupid. I don't know why you do that because it's a pain in the rear end to get the lower pan off of these things in the first place. It's even worse with that in place, so... I'll take the lower pan off, and then I'm going to take out this stupid fan, and, uh... Probably remove these dumb rubber feet, too, while I'm at it, because these look kind of stupid. And, um, you can see 165C... with the FCC ID, if this thing would actually freaking focus. This is why I don't use a cell phone to record videos, because it's a piece of junk. Whatever. Anyway, so there's more holes here. I, I, I don't get it. So let me pull this lower pan off. So here's the the machine itself. Here you can see where the fan was. Which I just ripped out. Could probably be useful for something, but I don't really care about it. So, wee. <laughs> anyway. Um... Unfortunately, it's left this disaster zone over here. There's probably not a whole lot I can do about that. Really, it doesn't matter because this is this whole pan is junk anyway because somebody has modded it. It's not on that side. It's over here. But uh, anyway, interestingly enough, it looks like the uh, trackball standoffs are intact. That's one of the big problems with these PowerBook 100s is these standoffs are all brittle plastic. They weren't very good when they were new, and they're certainly not good now. They're... All crack, they usually crack up and they break. That's one of the big problems. This one looks like it's okay. Here's the lower pan, which has pretty much everything in it, including the two piece motherboard. This one's got this on it. I don't know what this is. I guess I'm going to find out right now. Some kind of expansion. Unless it's RAM, which it could be. This one might actually have two RAM expansions. This looks like there's RAM here as well. This is definitely a RAM card. But I don't think I've ever seen one with two. That's interesting. So I'll try and put that back. Hopefully I can. It's trying to be annoying here. There we go. So I'll put that back into place. Somebody has obviously felt the need to replace this screw at some point, and I think that standoff is broken because the screw moved. It's usually not a good sign. If we had a modem, it would be there. This is a replacement hard drive. At least I think it is. I think that's like a 240. Uh, it says 270, but I think it's like a 240, 250. There's more holes down there, too. I didn't notice that until now. Well, you can see, it looks like they tried to cut it out, but it really didn't work. That's, I still don't understand why they, why you would do that. And you can see here how it's attached to the, the battery terminal. Well, you could before it lost the focus plot. So I'll have to see how I can get that out of there, probably involving pliers or something. I think it all works. I haven't tested the floppy drive. But uh, I think the I know the system does power up at the very least, so 
What I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll throw this all back together, and it should be a lot easier now that it doesn't have that dumb fan in it. And, uh, we can go ahead and power it up. See, run. I didn't even throw this thing that hard, and it already broke one of the fan blades off, so that's junk. Now, people love seeing destruction on videos, so. So that really didn't work. That did. Don't think that's going to be useful for anything anytime soon. Okay, I'm running out of battery here, so I better make this quick. But uh, I'll go ahead and we'll power the machine up now that I have put it all the way back together and unruined it, at least mostly. Nice. Now take two, except this time, I'm going to actually plug it in. <laughs> Generally helps, right? See the very dirty display. Again, it's passive matrix, so it might look a little weird. Here comes Macintosh. You can tell it's definitely color. Now you can really tell that it it's color. This is as found. I haven't done anything to it yet. I probably won't. This is running 7.5 already. Well, that was kind of funny. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the system's booted now. You can see it. Trackball even works, which is amazing. That's another sore point on these. It usually doesn't work at all. If I come ahead over here to the Apple menu about, which it's not focusing on. There you can see System 7.5 maxed out at 14 megs of RAM, which is interesting. I don't know why it's got that much. And I also don't know why the system software is using up that much either. So I'll have to do some clearing out. It's got some uh, mini applications on it. I might just junk those because it's got I've got really no use for it. It's got a couple files here. I'm not going to play them on this video, but I'll probably save them to like a floppy or whatever. In fact, actually, you can test the floppy drive. Got a couple of supposedly blank floppy disks here. From another system. Let's see if it actually happens to work. I don't think there's anything on it. It says 18K, but I don't see anything, so... See if we can actually put these over under the other machine on this floppy. See if it actually happens to work. Looks like it did, no problem. So that's cool. Anyway, so we'll close that. There's really not a whole lot of data on it. Now I'm really starting to run out of battery. My brightness went down, so I think that's really going to do it for the video. There's not much else I can think of to demo. So thank you for watching. If you've got any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off. Hope to see you next time. Till then.